When you talk to a Dell Technologies advisor, you get someone who understands there's an art to listening and can provide small business solutions that make you feel truly heard. For solutions powered by Intel vPro platform, call an advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. It's emergency pod time. The ghost is back to you. Hilton returning to the Indianapolis Colts for a 10th NFL season. Um, man, I think we called it, uh, Chris Presley and I. For those of you that have listened to the earlier podcast we recorded on Wednesday, you just knew this was coming. So I got Rosie Bell in the lap. We're all, we'll see how Rosie holds up here for about 10 or 15 minutes as I try to hand her everything in sight and entertain her with every object imaginable. We tried the Allegra bottle um, for my allergy medicine, but that makes too much noise. So we've moved on to the Prop Swap sunglasses. Shout out to Prop Swap, sponsoring Kevin's Corner. Um, let's get into it. Uh, one year, $10 million, eight guaranteed. Uh, that's probably the first thing that stands out to me is just, just one year. You know, in the reports of him turning down more money from Baltimore, I found that interesting as well. You know, committing to Xavier Rhodes and T.Y. for one year, I think that probably is more of an indication of of, of the market this year and the fact that um, there are a lot of teams, I think, afraid of giving those multi-year deals, especially to guys 30 years old and north of 30. Um, You know, but as I laid out in the blueprint earlier this offseason, you know, I I would have brought back T.Y. Hilton, and I think this is a wise move. You know, I fully acknowledge that um, he's not the same player that he was, you know, certainly a few years ago. I I think what's really key for Carson Wentz and the Colts this coming season is T.Y. Hilton is never going to be a possession wideout. You know, last year at the average, I believe it was a career low, uh, 3.7 catches per game. Like, Hilton's not going to be a seven-catch guy. So what you've got to make sure you utilize him with is to make the most out of those touches. Make the most out of those catches. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about it earlier today. We had the baseball analogy on the podcast, and I've been thinking about that a little bit more. Like, T.Y. Hilton is not in, you know, every fifth-day starter going seven innings for you and doing it from April 1st to October 1st. He's just not that anymore. But can he come out of the bullpen, throw the fastball, get a lefty out, um, you know, get you out of a jam, something like that? If he can provide those sparks, and I think that's where Carson Wentz comes into play because I think he gives you an opportunity for a few more sparks, then all of a sudden I think that's where T.Y. can be better utilized than he was last season, where really, yeah, a couple moments against the Texans, you know, the Raiders game, um, but, but just not enough out of him and I think that's kind of been his career it's usually a feast or famine sort of production pattern for Hilton and I think Wentz has got to get back to making sure that Pittman ascends to you're the six or seven catch guy week in and week out you're the big kind of number one consistent guy and now can T.Y. be used for those deep balls situational stuff obviously corner routes which we see him really excel on? Can you move him into the slot and find some matchups as well? I, I think that's where you want to see T.Y. Hilton evolve because, you know, it, it, it's weird. Well, I don't think there's a physical drop-off in Hilton's game. Like, I don't think all of a sudden he's that much slower, per se, than he was, you know, a few years ago. I think he just struggles a bit against press coverage and just the physical nature that goes with, again, being a consistent top-flight wideout for four quarters, which it's it's fine, and I think it's why, again, he's not getting the multi-year value. But if that's the case, that's where I think you've got to tap into a little bit of, all right, this is a guy that is going to provide a couple of chunks a game, and it's back to the you know four for 82 sort of thing. And uh, we're trying to go the puff route now with Rosie Bo, and she's loving it. So hopefully that'll, that'll calm her down a little bit. Um, but yeah, again, as I was saying earlier today, I just felt like this made a whole lot of sense because you're a week into free agency and you hadn't made another move at wideout. You know, to me, Sammy Watkins, it, 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 frankly, I just don't think you have room for Sammy Watkins. And I posted something earlier today on the website. Frank Reich had some Watkins comments, so check that out if you haven't seen it already. I always looked at Hilton plus one at wideout. I still think. You need to make another mid-level move. Now, I know it's a position that's always deep in the draft, but again, as we kind of shift towards the draft, that's where we're looking, I think, left tackle. I think it's edge rusher, and I still think it's tight end. 
Um, that, to me, arguably, is more important than another mid-level wideout signing. Um, so I think that's something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, you know, T.Y. stands for so much. He's not a diva at wideout like so many guys are at that position. And this just checked a lot of boxes. When we talk about guys that have been there and done that in this league, that position group, as much as there's intrigue with Pittman and Campbell, and Zach Pascal's done a lot for you, T.Y. Hilton has done it at a different level. And I just think having that guy in the room, having the guy that's experienced Reggie Wayne, has seen that Hall of Fame type of leadership at that position, and really just work ethic and professionalism, I think that's critical to make sure you still have that in that room. Um, especially when you have lost some other guys leadership-wise. I don't think T.Y. is the most vocal leader in the world, but I mean, just look at how you know his teammates react on social media. I think that speaks a lot to who T.Y. Hilton is. Um, and as much as he's not the same player as he once was, continue to look at the Colts' record when he's not in the lineup. It's an abysmal record. I mean, what is it? Is it one and eleven, two and eleven? This year, you lost the Ravens without him. Scored how many points in that game? Was that the lowest scoring game of the year? I'm looking at Rosie like she can look that up. <laughs> yeah, she's just staring right back at me. Ah, um, this is where you need Chris Presley. But yeah, I, I I just think there's still a presence. It's not crazy. I'm keeping the defensive coordinator up late at night, but there's still a presence with him. That is very important for this offense. You know, overall, and again, we'll, we'll continue to get into this throughout the rest of the month on next week's podcast and into April as well. It, it's I like a lot of what Chris Bauer has done so far. Um, the overarching theme of not addressing pass rusher as significantly as I think you should have will probably define this March portion of the offseason for me. But if you look back to that blueprint that I had, it was re-sign Hilton, re-sign Marlon Mack. I thought bring back TJ Carey and sign a mid-level corner. Now, I think Xavier Rhodes crossed that off. I, I didn't think you would have the money for Xavier Rhodes. So that's where I think um, that helps you out. Um, and then I, I just feel like pass rush, that, that is the one missing element to this. Um, and I guess mid-level wideout was the other one that I had listed on that blueprint. But, um, you know, it, it, it's a lot of running it back kind of with your own so far. And I know that can be interpreted in a lot of different ways, but I think guys like Rhodes, guys like Hilton, I think important guys to bring back for you. Um, are they the same game changers that they once were? And I guess mainly Hilton? No, but I think he's still important to what you have and it, it is needed just to carry a little bit of that leadership torch and continue to help Michael Pittman and Paris Campbell grow. So, um, I do think Carson Wentz can tap into a little bit more of T.Y.'s strengths. You know, there were times in the training camp last year where I was like, oh, wow, T.Y.'s going to catch a whole lot of balls. And, and I, and it, it was kind of false uh, 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 of me to all of a sudden think, you know, oh, wow, this Colts defense is playing heavy zone. You know, T.Y. isn't going to catch seven, eight balls every game like he did during some training camp sessions when you went to kind of heavy 11 on 11, on 11 stuff. Um, and we saw that during the season. And obviously, as we've talked about, T.Y. had some issues himself early on in the season. The drops in Jacksonville, uh, the drop in the sun against the Vikings. Uh, but made some big plays you know, in those playoff moments where you needed those wins. You needed to go 4-1 in December to get in the playoffs. And Hilton made some critical plays. Yes, in the playoff loss to Buffalo, um, there was a disappearance. And that's to be expected. And I think it kind of comes, comes back to what we talked about earlier on today's podcast is what is the value and the Colts are giving them 10 million a year. That's, that's a decent number. That was the number I thought, but it's only one year. And I think that contributes to really some of what, how really the NFL views TY and how the Colts still view him as, and, and Frank said this earlier today, doesn't have the same fastball, not in his prime, but he's as instinctive as a wideout as there is. You have room for that. Like, you, you can make room for that, and that's a key piece to this wide-out room and making sure that you kind of round out and really balance that group in general. So I think there are a couple questions I wrote down that I wanted to get to before we wrap it up. Um, Garrett says, didn't Hilton say this would be his last contract regardless of amount of years? 
Yes, Garrett, he said that. I could have sworn to you I also thought multi-year deal. So, you know what, he turns 32 in November. I mean, I don't think this would be it for him. Obviously, the market and the pandemic is probably not what he thought when he originally spoke with us, you know, back before the start of the season. Um, so I, I don't know. I sit here right now, March 24th, without T.Y. talking yet. I don't think this would be it for him, but we'll see. And then Wyatt, how seriously do you believe Chris Bowden will pursue Sammy Watkins now that T.Y. is resigned? Was it an either-or situation? You know, reading between the lines, it seemed either-or, but I thought Frank also mentioned, you know, they are different skill sets. Very different skill sets, and, and man, you know, I would want a little bit of insurance because, remember, I think you could make the argument over the last seven years, no position group on the team has underperformed more than wideout. While T.Y. has been there seemingly every year and, you know, a little bit of ups and downs, but for the most part been there every year, the support has not been there. I, again, I don't want to make that same mistake, especially with a new quarterback especially one that maybe you're a little bit worried about between the years. So when I'm thinking about all that, that's where I go out and make another move. Watkins, sure. You know, is there another mid-level guy that's still in the open market? Don't have the list in front of me. I know there's still a few more. I get the draft. Uh, maybe a fifth rounder comes in here and gives you something day one, but I also acknowledge there are some other positions that could use some draft capital as well. So shout out to Rosie Bow for gutting it out. Just tremendous effort by her on the emergency pod. Kevin Bowen wrapping things up. Chris Presley and I will be back. I'd like to get into the Tuesday rhythm again uh, with, with podcasts. Hopefully we will do that again. Thanks to our friends at Prop Swap for uh, sponsoring Kevin's Corner. Check them out as March Madness gets busy. And we got a little Masters season coming up as well. Emergency pod signing off, folks. Everybody have a great week. And uh, we'll talk to you next week.